So let's go to our dividers and then go to item. That looks good. Let's go to the other divider. That one's good. That one's good. It could be. We just need to scale them in a little bit. Or maybe go, it may be going too deep. Let's go for our side here. Let's go to wireframe. Oh, yeah, maybe it's just too deep. So let's grab those and just bring them up a little bit. Somewhere in there. Maybe, maybe even scale it on the x axis, you know, bring it in just a little bit. And the cool thing is, since we have the modifiers, it went ahead and did it on the other side as well. But we still have to do this one. So let's go to edit mode. And let's just scale on the Y, bring it in just a little bit. And if we look through wireframe, you know, maybe we don't go as deep there. So just kind of play with that. And now the cool thing is to re-export it and test it. All we need to do is just click on the base, 3D print tool, export, done. We'll go back here, delete that one, delete that one. And then notice that this one has been updated at 208 a few minutes later. So we're still getting the issue here. So let's check the scale of everything. That looks great. Aha, maybe we should apply our mirror modifiers. Let's see if that does anything. Now let's try and export that. So that didn't do it. So let's undo. So we'll keep our mirror modifiers because we want everything to be flexible. Okay. Maybe let's add some bevel. Aha! So it could be. Let's just delete these dividers for a second. Okay. Let's go into our base. And we'll look for the dividers. Let's just let's just delete those for a second. Okay. And then now let's export the base out. Okay, so we're getting everything nice and even. And we could we could 3D print that if we wanted to. But really we want to know why. Let's recalculate the normals. Sometimes the normals can be flipped. So let's see. Select all right click it or actually go to mesh normals recalculate outside or you can do shift in so that recalculates the normals so let's do that shift click on the base control minus and the same thing here control minus and they look a little different as far as the depths so let's grab both of them so this is kind of what you do, is just kind of mess with it. Sometimes just nudging things around. You know, we could go, ooh, if we went all the way through, that looks kind of crazy. What does that look like? Mmm. I don't know if I like it, but it's kind of cool. Let's see what that does. Definitely will use less filament. But it also loses the structure of our centerpiece, you know, if we hide these. 
we only have a tiny little piece here to support our centerpiece, which may or may, may or may not be good, but let's try it. So notice it's been updated to 13, 213. So that is definitely our new base. And the reason I like to do that is just because it keeps everything simple. You know, we don't have like 15 or 100 different STLs of the same thing. We don't know which one's which. We just update as we go. And that way everything stays neat and clean. You know, and you can always do new versions if you want. Uh, that actually worked, but I want to try and get it to work without going all the way through. So let's go back up. Grab our dividers and just grab and go up with a Z. Could be just because it's so thin. And one thing I'm noticing is that they're not really even. I'm just going to grab these and we're just going to make them a little more even. Okay, now they're even. Now we can do G and Z. I don't want to go all the way through. Maybe we just do a little bit of an indention. Let's try that. So make sure you have your base selected, hit export, and now that updates that. Hey, hey, we got it. So you just have to do a little bit of moving around on that. Um, if you want those, you know, that's what you may have to do. Another thing that could be cool, since we have all these bevels, let's try and bevel those dividers. So let's say, bevel. Let's put the bevel first above the mirror and we'll do angle. Oh, okay. I'm liking this so far. Let's go ahead and save and let's kind of curve it out. Oh yeah. That looks way cooler. Look at that. Just a nice little curve there. So let's do maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.56 is all we need. So we'll do that same thing. 0.56, and we just want the angle. Hey, I'm liking that. So now let's see if that exports nicely. We'll export it out. Got the newest one. Let's drop in our base. Hey, hey, I'm liking that. So that may be some, you know, that's kind of the workflow you may have to do from time to time. It's just try different things. But this should be able to 3D print, no wraps, no supports, uh, relatively quickly, maybe within a few hours. Uh, you can have a, a whole spinny toy uh, with your custom, custom font there. You can have different colors. And, uh, you know, you don't need any glue or any... Uh, you know, you don't need any glue. You just s stick it together. It's 100% 3D printable. Do that. Let's go ahead and prepare for print. Looky there. So it says about four hours on, uh, you know, 0.2 millimeters. We have 20 25% infill. We could also take off the the rafts and the supports. We don't need that. So 20% infill, 20 uh, 0.2 millimeter, with three top layers, three bottom layers, and three shells. So let's see how long. We'll go ahead and prepare for print. All right, two hours and 30 minutes is not that bad. So I'm relatively happy with that. I think that's pretty awesome. So go ahead and um, hit print. You know, start printing your things. And let me know in the, um, the student workshop. It's got a nice, cool-looking spinny toy.